Have you ever hung out with a friend late into the night, maybe sitting out on the porch, or chilling out in the living room, or out on a boat on the water, and just talked real talk about life, and deep thoughts, and where you want to go in life? It can be so refreshing when we sit down with a trusted friend, have some coffee, or go fishing, and just talk about life, our goals, our hurts, and what we long for in our hearts. Friendship is so important in our day and age when we get, go so fast and we get so busy. We don't seem to value friendship too much t- today, but we should, because friendship is vital in our lives. And friendship is a biblical concept. Jesus Christ had friends. He had people that he talked to and learned from and developed with. So, in our scripture today, Nicodemus, this leader in society, meets at night with Jesus, and they talk deep. They have real fellowship. And Nicodemus leaves having learned some things that will change his life forever. Nicodemus has heard all about Jesus. He's heard about what Jesus is doing in Israel. He's heard that Jesus has been doing miracles and healing people. And he realizes that there is something special about Jesus. Jesus is different from everybody else. He can't quite place what is going on, but he has to meet with Jesus so he can learn more. So Jesus sits down with Nicodemus. They're hanging out, having a good time, and they get into that mindset where they start talking deep. They start talking deep. So Nicodemus says to Jesus, Teacher, we know that you are a teacher sent from God. No one can do these miraculous signs that you do unless they have God's help. And then Jesus answered, and his, his answer is very interesting. He says, I assure you, everyone must be born again. Anyone who is not born again cannot be in God's kingdom. So Nicodemus is confused. He, he looks at Jesus and he says, how can a man who is already old be born again? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born a second time? Now, I'll tell you, when I was born, it was pretty bad. My mom was in labor for hours and hours and hours, and the doctors had actually forgotten about her because it was Easter weekend, it was Easter Saturday, and all the doctors, this is a time in America when everyone was Christian, all the doctors were were gone at, at Mass. So she, she, she was just left there giving birth to me for hours, and I, I was stuck. I was stuck. I got stuck. I got my head stuck. So, yeah, that's not good. So she had been there for a long time. When they finally re- realized where she was, they realized they had to do a, C, C, a C-section or I would die. Because my head was stuck in the uh, birthing canal. So they came in, they did the surgery, they cut my mom open, they cut me out, and uh, I was born. But they actually had to yank on me. My, my, my head was stuck, they had to yank on my, on my body, and they squeezed in my ribs, so I actually have a hole right here in my chest where they jerked in and yanked on me. So It's really interesting. I, I prefer to only be born once after that. Um, it's, it's not that I remember it, it just sounds pretty bad, so... Why do we need to be born again? I don't, I don't get that. Um, Nicodemus did not get it at the time. And uh, so Jesus tries to explain what he means to Nicodemus. He says, believe me when I say that everyone must be born from water. Born from water. And that's the first birth that he's referring to. But, but he says must be born from water and the spirit. Anyone who is not born from water and the spirit cannot enter God's kingdom. The only life people get from their human parents is physical. But the new life that the Spirit gives is a spiritual one. So Jesus says, don't be surprised that I told you, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants to. You hear it, but you don't know where it is coming from or where it is going. It is the same with everyone who is born from the Spirit. So Jesus refers to our first birth as being born from water, 
What what happens that that is a sign that the woman is about to give birth? The water breaks. Her water breaks. A- after your mom's water broke, then you were born. Amazing when you think about it. Actually, the fact that a woman's body is made to produce another life. But that's a whole other conversation. The fact that the human body is so complex, and that the female body is specifically designed to produce another life. It's, it's a miracle if you think about it. But then Jesus refers to being born of the Spirit. So I was born 34 years ago, in 1985, when my mom's water broke on that Holy Saturday. But in 2013, I was born again of the Spirit. I believed in Jesus at one of those church services in 2013, And I truly believe that Jesus was my Savior. And so I was at that moment born again by the Holy Spirit. I was born a second time of the Spirit. And I changed. My whole life changed at that time. I got clean from weed and pills and and, and, and other drugs. I, I quit smoking and drinking. I stopped sleeping around and I started worshiping God. I was born again. I had a new life. But Jesus also says says here that the wind blows wherever it wants to. You hear it, but you don't know where it's coming or going. And and that's really true with the Spirit. When when you think about the wind, we can't see the wind, right? We can't see it. It just blows. Uh, But we can hear it when it blows against the trees or whips past us when we walk along the road. And it's the same with the spiritual birth. We don't really know who is born again by Jesus. There isn't really anything physical that I can 100% tell if you are born again. You don't get a halo over your head that tells me, yes, that person is born of the Spirit, born again. The same way the wind blows and we can't see it. It's the same with people who are born of the Spirit. We don't know who they are or who they aren't. We can't see any physical change, so we don't know who is born of the Spirit and who isn't. See, like many of you who have been coming to dinner church faithfully for the last three months, but I still don't really know if you are truly born again or not. And it's okay that we don't really know. And it's okay if you're not there yet. It's okay if you're not at that point where you believe in Jesus, because this stuff takes time. It takes time. So that's okay. I remember when I first started going to church, I was like, I don't get this stuff. <laughs> I don't really understand what you guys are talking about, but, but I was curious. So I kept showing up, and I kept listening, and eventually over time, over months and months, it started to make some sense. It started to make some sense. So that's okay if you're not there yet. So Jesus tells Nicodemus all this, and Nicodemus asks him, how is all this possible? How is this possible? And oftentimes we wonder the same thing. How how can this be? How can this be? All this stuff Jesus says, it sounds just really like far out there. How can this be true? How can this be my, my life? How can this be the reality of things? And Jesus looks at him and he says, you're an important teacher of Israel and you still don't understand these things? He's talking to one of their leaders. He says, you don't understand this? How do you not understand this? And Jesus says, the truth is, We talk about what we know. We talk about what we know. We tell about what we have seen. But you people don't accept what we tell you. That's interesting. He said, I have told you about these things here on earth, but you do not believe me. So I'm sure you will not believe me if I tell you about heavenly things. The only one who has ever gone up to heaven is the one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man. You know what's really interesting about what Jesus says here? He doesn't say I. He says, we testify. We testify what we have seen and heard. See, Jesus is not alone when he was on the earth. He's not alone. God the Father and God the Spirit are with him. Remember how we talked about the fact that God is a trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they were all there when he spoke to Nicodemus. They were all there with Jesus. And the same is true, amazingly, think about this, the same is true if you're a Christian. The Trinity is with you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? 
God walks with me wherever I go. And I need that. I need it so bad in my life. I need Jesus every single day. And I hope you guys understand that in your lives as well. So Nicodemus didn't understand. And he comments how the people of Israel, they don't seem to want to believe in Jesus. And they didn't want to listen to Jesus. Oftentimes they'd argue with him and yell at him. And it didn't make sense to them. And it didn't quite, you know what I mean? It didn't quite connect. And I'm sure some of you feel that same way. It doesn't quite connect with you. You might be thinking, well, I'm just, a, I'm just a construction worker. I'm just a farmer. I mean, I'm not smart enough to understand all this stuff. I, I'm, just, I'm just a homeless person. I'm, I'm just a trucker, an alcoholic, or a businessman. I'm, this, this can't be for me, can it? it? It's for other people, but not for me, right? Wrong. <laughs> it's for you. It's for you. And, that, and that's, that's what I didn't understand. And I thought, wait a minute. I'm like college educated that this can't be for me is it i mean that this for other people this religious people but it's for you in fact the people in this room right now are exactly the people that jesus constantly hung out with constantly jesus did not go hang out with the billionaires and millionaires and super educated people he went and hung out with everyday people it is not too complicated it is not too far out we can understand it we can understand it. it is for us personally. That's that's that, that's that's what's so cool about Jesus is that he skips past all the wealthy people, all the world leaders, and comes right to us. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that awesome? He comes right to us because he knows that the prideful will never be able to receive him. They're think I got my billions of dollars. I, I don't I don't need Jesus. But us, we're, we're willing to listen. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to say, all right, Jesus, t- tell me about who you are. I'm willing to listen. Jesus loves you. Amen, brother. So all you have to do is, if you don't get it fully, just start with this. Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Jesus, if you're really out there, if you're really who you say you are in the Bible, show me who you are, and I'll be responsive to that. Start with that. You can make a start, right? Pretty soon you might find yourself on an entirely different journey in your life, right? It's amazing. So this scripture today in John 3 is very beautiful. It's this real conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, and it concludes with this famous portion of scripture from John 3. John 3, which says, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The famous John 3.16. And that's often what happens when we encounter Jesus. We sit down and talk to him. We get the truth. The truth. And I love the truth. I'm so sick of commercials and people lying to me and pyramid schemes and all these things. I'm sick of it. I want to know the truth. And Jesus says, I am the truth. Finally. Finally. So, I'm, I'm glad all you guys are here because what, what Nicodemus and Jesus did, did is... Um, they just sat down and talked together, just like what we do at dinner church. Amen. God is good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us here, that you've gathered us together to learn about Jesus. We thank you that we get to break bread together, that we get to hang out together, just like Jesus and Nicodemus did. And in so doing, Lord, we have deep conversations about things that really matter. So Lord, help us to understand what it means to be born again, born a second time. We thank you, Lord, that you have saved us. We believe in you, and we seek you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.